Welcome to Key County Connects, where we connect you to the important regional issues in the county. I'm Enrique Serna. Should undocumented immigrants be detained in jail, even if they are not accused of committing a serious crime? Many people say no, and now the King County Council is considering a measure that would ban federal immigration holds except for those of defendants facing violent or serious criminal charges. We're talking today with King County Council Chair Larry Gossett, King County Sheriff John Urquhart, and Attorney Ann Benson with the Washington Defender Association. And welcome all. Well, uh, Councilman, let's talk first about this proposal that you have put before mm -hmm. the County Council. Tell me how it came about and what you're, what you're really asking. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's been uh, sponsored by uh, me and Council Member uh, McDermott. And uh, it came about because constituents all over our districts uh, have been raising concerns about being fearful, not being willing to cooperate uh, with the police, and feeling that it's been significantly unfair the number of immigrants, particularly from the Latino community who for very low uh, level crimes or being convicted of no crime whatsoever are being taken out of King County Jail, detained and taken to Federal Detention Center. Um, our constituents as well as us feel that it's very unfair and ICE, most importantly, uh, ICE has indicated not only locally but throughout the nation what we're after are the worst of the worst uh, uh, criminal offenders, those who have uh, uh, committed serious uh, crimes, murder, s assault in the first degree, s sex crimes, and not uh, interested in picking up a lot of people. And we are just asking that, uh, at least here in Martin Luther King Jr. County, that we hold them uh, accountable, accountable for what they have articulated is their primary goal in what is uh, called the Secure Communities Program. And ICE is uh, Immigration Customs and Enforcement. Yes, John Urquhart, um, what are we talking about in the county jail? I mean, do we are, are we having a lot of folks that are uh, being detained there by ICE and being held there because of this? Or well, what? I think there's certainly too many. Councilmember Gossett is exactly right when he says there are certain people that we don't want in this country that should be deported. The question is how do we separate those out from the people that get swept up in a relatively minor arrest and yet still get detained uh, by ICE uh, and then are sent down to the Federal Detention Center in Tacoma pending uh, either an adjudication of that particular case or being deported. That's really the key issue and since they're not doing a particularly good job of separating out those two groups, we're going to have to do it ourselves in King County. And, uh, and as far as uh, from where you're coming from, you're defending many of these folks that maybe end up getting uh, <coughs> into the county jail system and may fall in these categories. Uh, what's the biggest concern as far as where you're coming from? Well, I think the, the biggest concern uh, is, has been articulated by Councilmember Gossett and by Sheriff Urquhart. Uh, <clears throat> the biggest concern is that the current practices that are happening in the King County Jail are not aligned with what ICE says that its priorities are. Um, <clears throat> ICE has, has uh, said repeatedly for many years that its priorities are apprehending serious and violent uh, people who have been convicted of serious and violent offenses. Um, and based upon the study that Catherine Beckett uh, did at the University of Washington that analyzed all of these detainer requests for 2011, uh, that's not what's happening. Uh, what's happening is that the majority of people that are being targeted for these ICE detainers are people who are being charged with low-level offenses, many of them yet uh, no criminal convictions at all. Um, and so the whole focus of the ordinance is to try and bring our practices in, count, in King County uh, aligned with what the serious, or excuse me, the uh, priorities uh, of the federal government are. What, what does kind of impact does this have on families too that then get separated or you know th they suddenly find that uh, their loved one is incarcerated and is stuck? 
Well, certainly speaking from what we see every day, um, you know, many immigrants are connected to U.S. citizens. Uh, there's a, a significant percentage of our families in King County that are of what we call mixed status, uh, where some family members are U.S. citizens, some are immigrants. Um, <clears throat> and so the impact on families is enormous uh, here in King County and throughout the state and throughout the country. Uh, it has a dramatic impact. Uh, it isn't about just what happens to the immigrant. Uh, immigrants are part of our communities, and so it's not just the families, but it's also so the families and our communities that are being dramatically impacted by these practices. Uh, go ahead. I just wanted to say, Enrique, that you know, immigration reform, the immigration debate that's taking a place and has been taking taking place all across the country, uh, is, is a good debate. Uh, and it's to a certain extent, it's a political debate. And as sheriff, I don't want to weigh in on that. What I will weigh in on, however, is keeping communities safe. And if people are afraid to call the police, if people are afraid to be a good witness to a crime, then I can't do my job. I can't keep people safe. And that's what's happening now. I believe people are not reporting crimes or not calling us because they're afraid they're going to get deported. And if it's for a, a, a low-level crime in the first place, that's not acceptable to me. Let's talk about uh, what this ordinance does as far as, I mean, you, you have really tried to make an effort here to, to kind of separate things, yes. to say we're talking about the people that have committed low-level crimes but versus the folks that have committed serious crimes. So explain that a little bit and also uh, there's also a part of this regarding those that have been uh, under, you know, DUIs and, and things mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the state of Washington has done a lot of work cataloging crimes in Washington State, the state legislature. So we are simply uh, using the major categories that they use of crimes that they consider uh, serious. And we have all those included in our legislation. And we have them, you know, listed by RCW. And uh, again, as all three of us have said, we want ICE uh, to be consistent and what, who they're picking up. So the legislation actually says if they present to us proof that this person has uh, committed a, a serious violent uh, or sex uh, or other kind of crimes against per persons that uh, they want them detained and then we will auto automatically honor that. Uh, but uh, we won't do that for those that are in there for a low level misdemeanors or there is no record of them ever being uh, found guilty of anything in the past or even uh, uh, charged uh, or tried on the more immediate local reasons that they're in our jail. And as far as someone that might have been uh, apprehended and convicted for drunk driving, are yeah. there are certain uh, levels for that as well? Yeah, the state uh, law, this is a state law, not King County, uh, says uh, it, th these are uh, serious but minor traffic offenses on the first, second, third, and fourth. And there has been clamoring and demand from citizens all over our state that that be uh, adjusted. The state legislature uh, hasn't done so yet, uh, but it's possible that in order uh, to uh, perfect and ensure that we get bipartisan support for this legislature, we may say if someone has two drunk driving uh, convictions uh, that, you know, we will uh, let them. Has this been confusing throughout the country? I mean, and yeah. as, because it sounds to me that nobody really totally gets where ICE is on all of this. I, and I may s should note here, too, that um, there was an article in the Seattle Times, also it was an Associated Press article. ICE has not commented on this other than to say that since it's pending legislation, they haven't really, uh, they're not making any comments yeah. at this point about what they're asking them to this. meet with me as a, a sponsor. And what have they said so far? They haven't uh, responded. And does, I would imagine that is a little, little trying at times yeah, to yeah. try to get some answers on. Yeah. From a law enforcement standpoint, I would, where, where are you on this? It's pretty confusing. It is confusing. And, and again, my job has to be protecting the public. And I'm faced with a situation where I can't do that. And that's why I'm supporting this legislation. And quite frankly, I'm not going to get down in the weeds and talk about which crimes shouldn't be on the list, which crimes should it be three DOIs or four DOIs. That's not my job. 
My job is to say that I can't do my job of protecting the public the way things stand now, and it needs to get fixed. And if it can be fixed at the ICE level, that's great. If it takes a county ordinance to fix it, that's fine too, as long as it gets fixed. The confusion part of this, particularly uh, even with steel, with ICE quite a bit and on these types of immigration issues, is this something that is kind of uh, across the country? Oh, absolutely, it's across the country, and we could have a whole show on that. <laughs> um, but I think one of the more important pieces, uh, you know, in terms of helping people in King County understand this issue, um, I'd like to take a minute to say that, you know, these, uh, what, what we're calling ICE detainers, these are requests by ICE, that when the jail, um, when someone is released from jail, um, that the jail hold the person um, for a period of time for ICE to be able to come and take them into custody, and then they are transferred uh, to the federal detention center in Tacoma to the Northwest Detention Center in Tacoma um, where they are where deportation proceedings are initiated against them and so one of the things that I think it's really important to emphasize here to kind of separate out from the confusion um, and Councilmember Gossett and Sheriff Urquhart can can uh, weigh in on this or if, uh, if if necessary but it's important to understand that anyone who's brought into the King County Jail and that is charged with a crime they are not released from the jail until they go before a criminal court judge what we're talking about with this ordinance is trying to put the focus back on our criminal justice system and the criminal courts because nobody is released, whether you're a U.S. citizen or a non-citizen, nobody is released until a criminal court judge has that person in front of them and makes a determination about whether that person is, is dangerous to the community and whether they are a flight risk or at risk of not showing back up for their criminal court hearings. And so nothing about this ordinance changes that. Nobody, no matter what crime they're charged with, is going to be released until they go before the criminal court judge. And so what happens now, these ICE detainers trump the decisions by the criminal court judge. Right, the criminal court judge, somebody comes in and they're charged, let's say, you know, with a, with a theft offense. The criminal court judge is going to look at that person and the defense attorney's there, the prosecutor's there, and they have a hearing about whether this person is dangerous or a, a public safety threat and whether or not they're going to show back up for their hearing. And so the criminal court judge will make that determination. And in many cases, you know, for people, most people in the King County Jail, they, they get a bond or they get released on their own recognizance. If they have a nice detainer, that detainer trumps the court's decision and the person can't be released. So, so we're, we're really looking at kind of an interference of due process here as far as... Uh, Absolutely. And if you're a lawyer, that's confusing. <laughs> There's also nothing to prevent ICE from going out and arresting these people right. if they are so dangerous and ICE yes. feels they need to be deported or investigated. They can stand outside the, the doors of the jail and arrest them as they come out if they want to. They've yeah. chosen not to do that. They have the information that they're in the King County Jail. That's so, a, Let me understand something here as far as, or try to understand um, as best you can. Uh, why is there, it seems to be this uh, either lack of communication or really an understanding of who does what, who's on first, who's on second, and how, how you get home, you know? What I mean, is there a lot of confusion about that, about as to the federal regulations, to state, to county, and where, you know, people end up being stuck in the middle of all this, or what? Go ahead. <clears throat> well, I, I'm, I'm not so sure that there's a lot of confusion when you actually look at what the law says. Congress has not passed any laws that require, it's very clear that local jurisdictions have the authority to make determinations about when they are going to, how they're going to honor ICE detainer requests. That's very clear in the law. And, um, and I'm happy to provide statements from you know the government that make clear that that's, that's the current situation. And, the again the stated policies of ICE and the federal government are here are our stated policies we're looking to apprehend people who have been convicted not charged but people who have been convicted of serious, serious. and violent offenses um, part of the confusion has come uh, because of the way on the ground the federal government is implementing this and there's actually conflict and confusion within the federal government about how this is happening how um, much of the debate now over comprehensive immigration reform is, uh, you know, is at play in all of this? I mean, I know you, you don't want to get in all of the weeds of all of that because it's an ongoing process, but is that causing uh, for confusion as far as, uh, you know, how ICE operates as well as some of the other issues here? Or do you know? 
you know, immigration enforcement issues are, I think, at the at the forefront of our challenging immigration debate. Um, and not only in the context, this has been happening now for years, um, for certainly intensely for the last five years, um, and you're seeing that in many states. I think folks on your show are, have probably heard about the, the laws in Arizona and Indiana and Alabama and other states that have been trying to grapple with this issue in some very provocative ways. And so the whole issue issue of how we go about enforcing our immigration laws and how we go about apprehending people and what kinds of rights do they have and that's that is very much uh, uh, an unresolved issue um, that I think people are struggling with and certainly it's informing the immigration reform debate and I think as, as as time has gone on especially since 9/11 there's been a much more a much bigger focus on immigration. Uh, certainly Homeland Security, we don't have INS anymore, Immigration Naturalization Service, it's now ICE, which is part of Homeland Security, which means the Border Patrol, both on the, at the northern border uh, and the southern borders, have been beefed up. So it's, it's a bigger issue now. There's more, there's more border agents out there. There's a bigger emphasis on it. And as part of that, the whole immigration debate uh, is, is much bigger than it's ever been before, and the debate over immigration reform. We hear about that all the time. I think one of the fallouts from that is this whole situation regarding ICE detainers. Uh, and that's why we're hearing about this now when we haven't heard about it in the past. That's right. So I would concur that there's a direct relationship between the need for comprehensive immigration reform and this ICE detainer issue because the shock and the terror that is created in the family homes, whether it be an apartment uh, or a house or wherever they're staying, and they come to local immigration advocacy groups, community-based organizations, Somali, Latino community, their uh, politicians pleading that letters be written for loved ones that have been arrested for uh, low-level crimes or no crime that they can ascertain whatsoever, and it's creating havoc. Uh, and there's a direct relationship. It's not gonna really be solved in any significant way until we do have comprehensive immigration reform that's fair and offers some kind of pathway to citizenship. Other legislation or similar legislation been passed in other counties, um, either in the state or around the country or other, uh, other yes. counties? Uh, Cook County and Santa Clara County come to mind, both of them, and they, they don't even have the kind of modifications that we are feeling most comfortable with because we want to get solid bipartisan support in both of those locales, I think I'm correct in saying that they don't uh, cooperate at all with uh, ICE in releasing their prisoners. And, and I take it you know all this pretty yes. well as far as, as, as defending a lot of folks. So how has that worked elsewhere? So I think one of the best examples is in Santa Clara County in California. Um, and they passed, as Councilmember Gossett said, they passed an ordinance that was uh, beyond even what this one is. They passed an ordinance saying that they weren't going to honor any ICE detainers um, uh, unless certain conditions were met by the federal government, which haven't been met. And that was passed, um, it'll be two years in September. And they did a study af uh, uh, within the first year of the ordinance being passed. And what they found was that it did exactly what Councilmember Gossett had referenced earlier was that it required um, ICE then to actually assess which of the folks are we going to prioritize going after? Where are the people who've been convicted of serious and violent offenses that we want to prioritize? And they were doing just that, going out into the community and apprehending those folks. Um, so it, even though it went further than this one does, it had the consequence that we are hoping would come from this particular ordinance, which is to you know, align the practice with what the priorities are, um, so that they have data that has shown that has happened in Santa Clara. Have you talked to other law enforcement folks around the country or elsewhere? I've talked with, with the other sheriffs as I, as I go about my business, uh, and there is controversy. It goes both ways. Uh, but this is King County. This is the largest county uh, in the state of Washington. Uh, this is not groundbreaking legislation, as you've heard, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing for King County. It's the right thing for the Sheriff's Office and certainly every other police agency, uh, at least in King County, if not across the state. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe it'll be groundbreaking for the state of Washington, if nothing else. All right. 
Well, we will leave it there, and we will see uh, what happens uh, not only with this legislation, but with the whole issue of comprehensive immigration reform, which, uh, if that ever does happen, it might bring some clarity to all of these things. Those, thank you all for joining us today, and thanks for joining us for this edition of King County Connects. Please visit us online at kingcountygov kctv. I'm Enrique Cerna. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you.